Sir, what was the one thing that you remember from that day very vividly? Was there a specific time, a specific hour where you kind of realized what was happening? <laughs> Uh, well, I think the most uh, vivid memory I have is just uh, when we put interest rates up from 10 to 12 percent, uh, how it had absolutely zero effect. And I remember just looking at the computer and seeing an absolutely straight line. The currency hadn't moved at all. And I felt just like a surgeon looking at a heart graph of a patient and realized the patient was dead. And so what did you think then? Well, I have to, well, I have I to do the, more. Yeah, or, the, or was it right, I need to think about who did you speak to first? Well, the, the issue was getting out and getting out uh, quickly. Um, and unfortunately, because of various things within Whitehall, that took uh, a, long, a long time. Can I just make one point? You talk about Britain leaving the ERM, Britain being kicked out of the ERM. This terminology is always used. But actually what happened was the breakdown of a system. And it's often, well, it's always ignored the fact that eight other countries went through the identical experience to Britain. And actually Britain was not the first country to devalue. Italy devalued before. Three Scandinavian countries devalued before. Uh, indeed, uh, had Italy not devalued, I don't think Britain would have been put in the position but it was. So it was the breakdown of a system. And we all, we all talk about it as it was a specifically British event. It was a European event. Yeah, but people do remember the UK more. Why do you think that is? Did, well, did George Soros, you know, partly have a play in this? Well, how much money Mr. Soros made you know, is not in that sense really, I think, important. I think uh, people remember the pound falling up because the pound was obviously the biggest, most traded currency in the ERM. But you know, it is a fact that almost every currency connected with the ERM, other than the Danish krona, other than the Deutsche Mark, uh, and there was one other, uh, the Luxembourg currency and the Belgian, did not. But everyone else, and everyone else exhausted their reserves as well. What was the most difficult decision you had to take at the time? Well, actually, uh, it was perfectly obvious that we just ought to get out. That was, uh, I mean, I personally had been urging that we suspended our membership. Uh, I'd twice approached the Prime Minister about that before because I thought that the policy was becoming inappropriate. I mean, let me make one other point about it. Uh, I don't think our period in the ERM, contrary to what most people think, and I don't suppose I'll ever convince people of this, but actually I think we benefited from getting out. I think it was a good thing we got out, and I think it was a good thing that we had a period in because we had a very, very uh, strong counterinflation measure. And inflation went from 11% to under 2% in a quite short period of time. Now, that was very painful, but it put the British economy economy in a very competitive position in the decade that followed. Now, the chief beneficiary of that was Gordon Brown and Tony Blair, but you know, that is what happened, and we had a very tight fiscal policy as well. So it paved the way for a major upturn in the economy, having cured the problem we had of a very big inflation.